What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog. <laughs> Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Hi, kids. It's, uh, I almost said Monday. This is what happens when you go traveling on a weekend to San Diego and you forgot what the hell date is. I am back. I am back on radio. It is Tuesday, obviously, because Monday I was in an airplane coming back from California. Um, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. In fact, I'm not even doing my show from my home. I'm literally on the road from going place to place. I've worked all morning, and now I had to quit stop, literally, at a restaurant to do my show. But so very grateful that I am getting a chance to stop and do that. Olivia is my guest today. If you read my uh, various pages, platforms, et cetera, you would see my lovely write-up about her. She is a woman of a million means. She is by far... Um, I'm sure she's going to make me extremely more nervous than I am already because she's so talented and accomplished, and there's much that she's done in her life. She has a brand new venture that she's working on recently, which is a YouTube channel by the name of Barkville. So, excuse me. Try that again, Cindy. Barkville TV, which we're going to be talking about. What I think is super neat about this concept is it isn't so much directly related to man as it is to dog, which I think is amazing. Putting together a channel that incorporates animals, and trying to help animal adoption and animal rescue is a hugely important thing for many reasons. Why? Because most people lately aren't taking the time or the trouble to actually adopt. It's much easier to rid of an animal than it is to adopt them, unfortunately. And so it's nice to be able to see a platform like this. And not only that, it's entertaining. It's inspiring and it's informative, and I'm really excited to talk about it. Quick few notes here. I don't want to forget to mention that I put up my show schedule. If I'm not mistaken, if memory serves me right, I have shows today, tomorrow, and Thursday. So that would be the first, the second, and the third. I hope that everybody had a wonderful Halloween. If you were following my journey, you saw that I had my little maid costume that I was going to do for Halloween. Shocker, I never got a chance to wear it. Shocker, we came home and nobody felt like going to trick-or-treat yesterday. So sadly, if you guys have an event for me that is coming up where I can wear a nice little naughty maid costume, more than happy. Um, also wanted to remind everybody that we're going to have some news and information about Phil Marish's benefit that's coming up in the next week or so. Also, I just planned um, for December 10th and 11th, if anybody in the New York City is listening and might be interested or has a celebrity that wants to be participating, I have a bookstore that's a dear friend of mine. It's a friend of a friend, really. Her store has been suffering due to great, great lengths uh, as it comes to, we all know how much I hate. So I can imagine in New York City, it's pretty similar that the uh, parking situation sucks. And moreover, the road construction is even worse. And unfortunately, this beautiful, beautiful bookstore that's been built that utilizes things like doing book signings and other events. It carries books. Obviously, it also carries wine. Put together book and wine, you got Cindy right there. Um, sadly, though, as we all know in today's society, when you have major road construction and uh, you're right flat in the middle of it, it's going to affect your business. Uh, so I just do merge forces with this lovely young lady. What we're going to do is have a two-day solid event, both a Saturday and a Sunday. One will be an evening show on a Saturday. One will be an a- uh, excuse me afternoon show on Sunday. Two different people, two different celebrity interviews. We'll have a little acoustical musician. We'll have ourselves a little book signing and, of course, the live interview. So, of course, there'll be a ticket charge, all of which is going to be going to the uh, bookstore. I'm also going to be bringing my homemade Oreo truffles. Profits going to the bookstore as well. Our hope is to be able to give these guys some sort of footage or leverage so that this way, if by some strange chance the road construction lasts six months or so, we're not going to have issues. They're not going to have issues. As we all know, I'm a huge supporter of independent anything. Um, But independent books, uh, as I just noticed, San Diego, I was kind of wandering around in one of their bookstores to remind myself of why it is I started this crazy career that I have in the first place. And it all came down to one very simple thing, and that is a very, very simple word. Words. It has everything to do with words and the magic that they possess and how we put them into the universe and they mean something to someone or sometimes if we get lucky, a whole lot of someone. So um, I've been very blessed with my career with words and I want to make sure that we have independent people such as this that take their time and their trouble, put all their money and their hard work and effort into something independent instead of the big bad bookstores I call them like Barnes and Noble. Did I just say that? Yes, I did. Um, 
so I like to be able to support our independents. I like them taking a chance and opening up a, a store that's of significant meaning. And in this particular case, it's closer to the Long Island side of things. So it's kind of nice to be a little bit out there, not so much in the city. So please do come and join us. I'm very, very excited to merge forces, and I really hope I'm able to save them a significant amount of worry. So without further ado, it looks like Olivia's calling in. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. Aren't you excited? Let's get her on the line and start talking with her. Hi, Olivia, New York City. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Oh. <laughs> okay, you sound like you're right next door to me. Okay, so this is good. So how is my New York City? I'm coming soon. You're leaving and I'm coming there. That's I big. know. I know. Uh, it's, it's what awesome were you doing I there? I don't want to leave. I've been shooting um, Barksville TV here. Came out on location. Oh, nice. Yeah, came out on my own. Worked with um, some crew one guy, um, a cinematographer who I've worked with before in my Viper Room movie in L.A., Patrick Kendall, okay. who shot some stuff with me here. And then I got some new teammates here, um, which was nice. great, Topher McLean. And, yeah, and then I shot stuff on my own. Like, I did kind of a one-man show. Okay. And um, it's, it's been really intense and really wonderful, and we got really, really beautiful content. The scene, the New York doggy scene is rich and abundant and yes. awesome. Yes. Yes, it is. I wanted to ask you a question about that because I don't know. You, now, do you bring animals with you like when you travel and such? Well, I haven't this time, but I am next month. I, I have I have you my are. baby, Pippin, and Pippin okay. is one of our Barfield players. She's, she's, she's a chihuahua with really big ears who dances Aww. in the Dance Moves video. And uh, okay. she also plays in Mad Mutt's Furry Road, which is up right now on the channel. She plays uh, the guitar the guitar rock star and driver in the Harley jacket. And she also plays one of the oh, beautiful cool. um, beauties. She, she plays, she's a, she's a, she plays girls and boys. <laughs> so she is, oh, that's me. She's, 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 she's an awesome. equal opportunity dog. <laughs> she's an equal that's opportunity cute. dog. So yeah, that is I'm going to bring her cool. with me. I'm going to bring her with me next okay. month because people were asking about her and also being here and being around all these other doggies made me really miss her. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Oh no, I bet. Because you know, the dog, the dog parks there. In fact, I've interviewed some of the people that have done some work relative to dogs in New York city, of course. And it's just like you were saying, the rich part, the dog parks there are beautiful or try walking to mm -hmm. Central Park one day. Oh my God. It's like getting shivers already. I can't, oh, I can't wait to come back home. Now, because you were there mm -hmm. yesterday, I have to ask you, did you go to the big Halloween party? Because, you know, they have that big thing yeah. in New York City where it's like a huge yeah. party. You did. That's what I can't well, wait. I came out here for this. So that's that's oh. why I'm here, and I, and I filmed it. So um, mm. I did. I did. There's two parties. I did. So there's the Tompkins Square Park Halloween Doggy Parade. And yes. we came out. I came out here last week. I shot that last weekend um, so that I got okay. all the B-roll from that. And then I was waiting to do the interview with Ada Nieves, who is the founder mm -hmm. of that parade and the founder of the New York Pet Fashion Show. And um, nice. I, got to, I got to hang out with her throughout the week, go to parties with her. Um, we're going to be working together some more coming out next month. And so I did that. Mm -hmm. And then last night we marched in the, the village, the village parade, the Greenwich Village Parade with her chihuahuas oh, and all these chihuahuas. Yeah. <laughs> That is absolutely awesome. Okay. Now, yeah. there's a whole bunch of things to talk about with you. And before you came on air, I told everybody basically the premise beside uh, Barkville TV. So I have some questions, of course, relative to this. And as you mentioned, you just launched on the 19th of this month. Um, and, of mm -hmm. course, let's start with the Halloween dog parade because I knew that you were going to attend that. So tell me something, because obviously I'm going to guess, and, and I'm making a comparison because I just came back from California. And I have noticed some differences between California and New York City. I didn't see a whole lot of pets in California, I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I'm mm -hmm. guessing that you're in the richer area as it relates to that. So when you say Halloween dog parade, tell us some of the neat or integral parts of that parade, not just the Halloween aspect of it, but what's a little different um, in participating in something such as that? Is that I mean, hello? Everybody. Okay, hello? Oh, can you hear me? Are you still there? No, I can hear you. I lost you for a second and I panicked. Okay, but there you are. Go oh, ahead. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm here. Okay, so what's so awesome about the New York – the New York scene and the parades are that the people dress up like their dogs. They dress up in matching costumes. Um, they wait okay. in a line. They wait in a the line. There were, I heard there were like 10,000 dogs that were 
spectators <sighs> that come out, and, and there really were. The, the line goes outside the park and around the block. I've never seen so many dogs and their people ever. It was amazing. Oh, my God. In the rain. That's in awesome. In the rain, and it was raining. So oh, my God. Really dedicated dog lovers, and, the, and, the, and, and they dress their dogs up so beautifully. They're not just, like, store-bought costumes from, you know. Okay. They're, like, mm-hmm. people make the costumes. They're gorgeous. Oh, my God. How neat is that? Holy man. So and I imagine – now, here's a dumb question because you're going to forgive me. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions that are relative to dogs because I have beautiful boys at home, but I don't have dogs. I have a cat. I, I just I, – I'm not home enough to have a dog. I don't feel it's fair. So my question to you yeah. is when you, dress, when you dress up a dog like that, how do they take mm-hmm. to that? I've always wondered, like, I mean, is it, like, inconvenient for them? Do you know what I mean? Because it's kind of like with us as adults, we get dressed up. How do they take to that sort of uh, primping, if you well, will? It, it depends on the dog, you know. It's like the dogs in Barkville TV, like Pippin is cool with being dressed up. And we put, like, sure. wigs on her, so she's, she's very mellow, and so she's cool. A lot of these dogs, like, there was a dog, we did a piece on a dog called Zuzu Swag. She's a model dog, a fashion model. And he has, mm-hmm. oh, it's a he, and he has a clothing line, a clothing line named after him. And he likes oh getting God. dressed. He, he puts his head into the clothes. Like when the mom holds up the outfit, he puts his head in to help her. Oh, so, my God. Seriously. So he likes the attention. Yeah, he likes the attention. Oh, and my he goodness. Likes, you know, a lot of them like the attention. Okay, I gotcha. So it just depends on the dog, obviously, or the particular pet and how often you're doing that, what you're putting him in, I gather. Um, exactly. Interesting. Now, obviously, one of the nicest parts that I always like to profile of any, any type of project is, of course, that a portion of your proceeds are going to animal rescue organizations. Um, and, of yes. course, obviously, another side part here is we're trying to inspire both animal adoptions and rescues. So two full question here. First of all, I realize that you're a pet owner, but talk to me a little bit about why animal rescue for you as a person is so important. And what do you feel is the main reason why I've just noticed that there's so many people that are so hesitant to, to go about with animal adoption or rescue. And I'm wondering why. So if you could touch on those two things, that would be great. Well, first of all, I want to say that I'm, I, I love pets, dogs that you can get from the breeder as well as adopt. I love all dogs and cats and animals. I'm for okay. adoption and rescue because there is an overpopulation in, in America, you know, we, we put our animals down, you know, there's, there's, I'm trying to help right. pass the no kill law also. That's what I, okay. my best friends is doing that. And I'm hoping to join forces with best friends and help okay. pass that law. But part of that is people have to be responsible and get their animals, you know, fixed so they don't have more puppies and more kittens. And so that, you know, it's just, I'm trying to help pass this law in the United States, but right now the law exists and there's an overpopulation of chihuahuas, of pit bulls, of, you know, I know there, there's a, there's a, a, a man who flies, I don't know his name offhand, but he has a thing called the Chihuahua Lift. And they, okay. they, fly, they fly chihuahuas from the West Coast to the East Coast because there aren't as many out here to adopt them. The, my uh, uh, rescue that I went to, to get Pippin from, Chihuahuas of the Valley, they buy airline mm-hmm. tickets for chihuahuas and pit bulls and send them to Germany because they have oh a shortage God. of them there. Isn't that amazing? So wow. that's why, I mean, that's why I'm inspired. I, I'm trying to inspire adoption. And the reason people think that they're, they're more hesitant about rescue is because people think, oh, I'm rescuing a mangy mutt, and that's all I get. And you know what? You can get any purebred dog from a rescue. We have, a, we have gorgeous dogs that are our rescue Barkville players. We have mm-hmm. an elegant standard poodle named Elvis of Venice. He was a rescue. I mean, and we have Chinese Aww. Cresteds, two Chinese Cresteds. They were rescues. I mean, so you right. can get anybody, you know? Gotcha. I understand completely. I do. Um, now, have you? are there particular rescue organizations that you work with or favor or ones that you could recommend maybe to the listeners or people that might want to help? Well, I, I love Best Friends. They're national, you know, and um, okay. they, 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 are, they have an amazing, they have sanctuaries all over the United States, and I'm actually a guardian angel with them, so I donate money to them on my own on a personal level every month, and, and they're who I'd ah. like to join forces with because they're national and they're helping to pass the no-kill law. Um, also, I love um, the Real Bark. The Real Bark is okay. a great one because they um, – 
they deal with with pets that are paraplegic and, and special needs animals, and they help they pay for their treatment and rehabilitation before they're adopted, which I think is amazing. Okay. You know, oh, definitely. Um, there's much, I agree with you. Much much love is another great one. Much love is another one that has special needs dogs. I mean, there's so many great ones. I I, I know right. I know these ones because I've worked with them with with kombucha dog. We did um. We did a piece with, for Kombucha Dog. It's it's a beverage, and they have adoptable dogs on the pictures of their labels, and they mm-hmm. work with those rescues. We worked with paraplegic dogs the day that we shot their piece, and um, I just, yeah, I just, I mean, these are the ones I'm being exposed to. There's ones in New York, there's one in New York called Brooklyn Badasses. <laughs> oh, my God, that's, really? <laughs> that one's supposed to be amazing. So there, there's just so many, you know? Sure. No, I understand completely. I do. I, I just, it's nice to have some, some hindsight or insight, I should say, into that only because this is my world hundred percent. I'm kind of delving out of that a little bit. What can I say? But mm-hmm. when I did go to New York, I found some beautiful dogs. Oh my God. There were some wandering, literally wandering around right outside of Central Park with their owners. And I thought, oh my God, it almost made me want mm-hmm. to buy a dog. But like I said, you'd have to, mm-hmm. it's either kids or pets. I think, I don't know that I can do both. Maybe, I don't mm-hmm. know. Either that, I don't mm-hmm. know. We'll see. Let's see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Now, we want to talk a little bit about Barkville. It's, there's three different components, folks, meaning that there's three types of series that you're covering here. First of all, there's doggy treats, which is, of course, the dog-centered animal shorts. Um, so give me a little taste into that. Um, are, you get, are these ones that you're going to be filming, or are people submitting them to you and you're putting them onto the channel, or how is that working? Well, doggy treats um, started by a friend of mine who's an artist, Oliver Arms, and he, it, they're animated shorts. And I would mm-hmm. love to have people, we only have a few of these right now because he's, he's a painter and he's really busy and he's doing his thing. But I would sure. love for people to start submitting. The whole idea of the channel, of the network, mm-hmm. is that I, need, I want this to become an artist's hub and that, we, you know, it's a collective. And everybody has mm-hmm. more directors and more producers because I can't possibly direct and produce all of them. Right, right now, I'm directing and producing two of the series. I sort of produce Doggy Treats, but, you know, Oliver's kind of on his own with that. The other two, I'm doing okay. all the episodes, you know, but they just, when my editor, Stevie Pine, just picked up um, a documentary he directed on his own, and I'm so glad because he's an amazing filmmaker. And he just okay. did um, week, Weekend Pup Date, Boxer Come Home, Boxer Mom Come Home. That's his. <laughs> ah, nice. Nice. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. This is cool. This is such a cool mm-hmm. concept. I love it. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Thank you. Now, we move along to documentaries, which is obviously these are dog films and rescues and dog-related stories, of course. Um, mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about the most interesting documentary, so to speak, uh, that you've come across or put together. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Well, we just, I mean, they're all they're all very different from, from each other, and, and now – they're going to go off into categories, I think, where e- different documentaries, there are going to be different series coming out of the documentaries. So okay. I, one that was really interesting that I had no idea what I was in for when I went up there was it's called mm-hmm. Poodle Day. And it's a, part one and part two. There's a poodle parade that takes place in Carmel, okay. California. Mm-hmm. And it happens uh, annually. And... Uh, it's amazing. Poodles come from all over the country and different parts of the world, mostly standard poodles, and people dye their poodles. They color them purple and hot pink, and they enter into this parade. And oh my um, God. it's pretty amazing because it's, it's unusual to see a standard poodle to begin with, but to see like 700 of them, you know, in one day, it's kind of a trip. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm so getting. I'm still getting over that whole color thing there. Wow. Okay. All right. Go ahead. So we did that. So we did that shoot, and okay. we met a lot of really interesting people. You know, some eccentric people, some great people, and they all love their dogs. Every the thing that everyone has in common, oh, sure. and the thing that the thing that's great about Poodle Day is it's for it benefits NorCal Poodle Rescue, but most of the uh, most of the doggies that enter the contest are pure breed bought dogs right so okay. it mixes everyone up so everyone's mixed it's rescuers and breeders and they're t- all together and everyone it's like everyone loves each other and i think it's really cool 
Oh, that is really neat, actually. I like that. Now, tell me something, because I, again, don't work with the uh, the animal side of things here. When you are tr- attempting to try to get an animal to perform, challenges, mm-hmm. I can only imagine, because if they're anything mm-hmm. like children, they behave when they want the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah. talk to me a little bit about the difference between working with a pet versus working with a human, because I know you work with humans on the other side of the fence quite a bit in entertainment. So tell me the yeah. differences. Is it easier? Is it more challenging? What's that like? Well, it's yeah. Well, it can be it it can be easier and it could be more challenging. It depends on what really how far into it you are. Like I've I've had pet pets that I've had the doggies that are just great and they work for treats. Like they're food motivated and they will just mm-hmm. sit there and chew. Like a lot of stuff that we do in Barkville is we have them chew the camera. That's for the pup culture pieces because we, we that makes them talk and we dub their voices. And um, that's really easy to do, but you can't work a dog more than an hour, hour and a half tops, because we had a doggy, Tyson, the pug, spit out his treats because he was done. Yeah. I got it. Okay, I see what you mean. So you're kind of limited on let's get him in there and get him done, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And then some dogs are better with, like, sitting and chewing treats and other dogs are cool to be handled and made to dance. I wear a green screen suit and I have them dance. I hold them and I make them dance. And some dogs oh don't God. like that and others <laughs> do like that. So nice. it depends on who you're working with. Pippin likes it. You know, my dog likes it. So she, so she doesn't like to sit. She doesn't like to sit and stay as well, but she loves it when I make her dance. Uh, so she's the, one of sure. the dancers. No, I get it. <laughs> that's awesome I absolutely love that and as you were just mentioning mm-hmm. before the pop culture of course is the third type of series you're talking about which you reference the Barkville players so basically you're parroting movies and music and television and things like that um, mm-hmm. now my question is I know this is going to sound stupid because it is Barkville TV but have you given the thought once this is up and rolling mind you of incorporating other things meaning cats or other animals and things like this or are you going to stick the whole genre of dogs you think no, absolutely, cats. I want to do Meowville next. That's that's where I want to go with it. Oh my god! How oh, cool! Yeah, absolutely. I love it. No, absolutely. I just we just have to establish our audience. We have to grow our audience and grow our followers. And once we're at a point where we can, you know, not just focus on the doggies, I want to move on to cats because I, as I said, I love them all. And then we could even move on. We have other. We have cats in our shorts too. And I there's a chicken now in it. In this one in New York, there's a chicken named Lady Gaga. Who's going to be oh my God. in this one in New York? <laughs> yep. Lady Gaga. That is so she's cool. I love it. Lady Gaga. She's a model. She's a model. Oh. Chicken model. That is so neat. That is so cool. Yeah. I, I just, that yeah. blows my mind away just thinking about it. It's an animal, not a person. I like that. That's yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. forgive me because I don't know this 100%, actually, because you launched, I know, on the 19th. So did you do something special? Did you launch at a certain place? Was there any kind of big hoopla surrounding the big launch? Well, the big hoopla was that I traveled to New York the next day. <laughs> so, ah, so we, that is a big hoopla. Get, I agree with you there. Yeah, and then we were shooting, like, the next day and the next two days. So I wasn't able to do the party. We are going to do a launch party once we hit a milestone. That's what I decided because the launch party is going to be a benefit. Um, it's going to be a fundraiser for the rescues. Oh, nice. For one of the rescues. And, then, and we're going to have doggy adoptions. And we're going to have Barkville player audition screen tests at the party oh, and neat. all kinds of good stuff. That is yeah. so cute. That is awesome. Yep. Any idea when this is going to happen? Um, well, we just need to hit a milestone, I think. I mean, I want to do it. I mean, now I'm coming back to New York in December, so I, it's gonna. I gotta see how our numbers grow. Um, hopefully, oh, not sure, too far sure, out. Sure. Maybe a couple. Maybe around the first of the year. Maybe then we'll see. I've got to figure it out. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on. It, once we launch, right. like all of a sudden, I was in express mode and everything's coming at us. It's very it's really awesome, but we've got to no, figure definitely. out. You know, yeah, there's too much content What's to film not? right now. Sure. No, I totally understand completely. That's all. That's fine. Now, on the flip side of the fence, I want to introduce everybody to the Olivia, uh, who's just Olivia outside of Barkville TV. Because believe it or not, mm-hmm. folks, there's a few things about her that are exciting. I know that you know this. Okay, so I have a fact about you, and I bet you do not know this. And it's probably going to embarrass you, but that's why I'm going to tell them. Because this is a cute thing. Statistic for her. First of all, I'm going to have a question after I tell you the statistic. 22,089 and then 47,059. Do you know what those numbers represent to you? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Well, there are 22,089 people that have called you the, their biggest girl crushed upon celebrity female. And 47,059 people, that's where you're at in terms of the top celebrity crush list. Did you know that? Did you no, realize how cute you are? I kid you not. It's a statistic. I researched you, and it's a fact. That's where wow. you, my dear Olivia, said. So here's the question. Uh, so a girl that is on a top celebrity crush list is single. Why? <laughs> because I'm I got to know the answer to this. What is up with that? Seriously. I'm a workaholic. It's because I'm working all the time. <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured and that. You know, that's, that's a typical it. Hollywood answer, I think. Because when I talk to a lot of celebrities, or like, you know, when you talk to someone on TV, they're like, are you kidding me? I'm so busy. But you're so pretty, and you're so talented. I don't get it. I totally don't get it. I'm like, oh, my God, you'd be you. a seal. But you, well, you well, look so at much. that. There's like 70,000 people that are crushing on you right now. So you have a choice of well, 70,000 dates out there. Just so you know. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe, out there. maybe this will change <laughs> now that I'm aware. <laughs> we'll yeah, you're not kidding. I just, I was amazed. I'm like, oh, my God, I wonder if she knows this. Because so that, that's quite I flattering, know. I have to say. I mean, I know it's an internet it statistic, is. but still, it's like, that's really nice. Definitely. No, it's really amazing. So now, it's really amazing. I found out that you were obviously born in Miami, and but of course you were starting on stage in New York City at the age of five. Um, I always like mm-hmm. to ask this question of those that have started young. Because you started so young, was that helpful to you? Because you know, first of all, at age five, all I was thinking about was playing with blocks, and I'm thinking, oh my God, what does it take to get on stage at age five? Did you want that, or was that something your family wanted, or how did you end up on that stage so young? I wanted it. I was I was in dancing school very young, at like three or four, and I showed a lot of talent in music, and, and I played piano. I was taking lessons at Carnegie Hall at five years old, and I was like this, you know, musical kid, and I loved attention, and I loved performing, and I wanted to do what my peers were doing at the dancing school. They were all doing TV commercials and theater in New York, and I asked my mom if I could do that too. And she took me to one of the kids' managers and they sent me out on a commercial and I got the first commercial I went out on, you know? Oh my so, gosh. Oh my yeah, gosh. it was kind of like that. And, and, and if it weren't for that, you know, starting so young and, and growing up in the business, I I'm probably would not be doing what I, what I get to be doing now, which I love, Really, you know, I love, I okay. love directing and I love producing. So that's okay. why I'm doing it. Oh, that makes perfect sense, of course. Now, I had read that you were the very first child to win the New York City Critics Circle Award. Um, mm-hmm. My question was, how old were you? And at that point in time, did you fully under? I mean, because sometimes when you're younger and you're a child and win something, you're like, oh, that's great. But is, is it more significant to you now versus when you were a child? Or did you get that significance as a young person already? Oh, it's absolutely more significant now. I don't think I knew what it meant. I don't think I understood it. I knew it was something special. I knew all of that. I understood right. that, but I didn't know the prestige of it until later. And, mm-hmm. and honestly, all the stuff that I did when I was younger, like I met and met and worked with all these very famous actors and, and right. famous musicians. And it was all just so normal to me, you know, because that was my world. Now that I look back on it, I'm like, wow, <laughs> wow, what a neat, neat life and now I embrace it like I really embrace it now sure that I that that all started this year where there was a while there that I was embarrassed about being a child actress I was like I don't know it was oh my gosh because well I was a little bit of an outcast when I tried to go to school and go you know be like a regular kid so I was a little sure. you know it, there was a mixed emotion there but now I've I've really grown to embrace it and and think of how you know, how wonderful. I mean, again, I'm where I am today. I have an awesome life today. And I, I get to, I got to recreate my life as a filmmaker and also work with animals who I love, work with dogs who I love and, and put it, put it all together. You know, like last right. year, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, I was, I was a dog handler. I try, I just wanted to work with dogs. And so I was a dog nanny, a dog mm-hmm. handler. I did normal jobs. But now, then I thought I've got to get back into entertainment because that's really what I know. And I've incorporated the two, which right. is a beautiful thing. Oh, without a doubt. Absolutely. I think it's quite clever to tell you the truth because nowadays, you know, everybody's coming out with new and different ideas. You really need to be very clever and very social media savvy and very into the, the latest and greatest, so to speak, to kind of survive out there. I've noticed nowadays. Um, oh, yeah. Now, I want. 
I want to talk about this side of you because I think it's so neat that you are both a songwriter and a recording artist, which I think is so, so cool. Um, <laughs> you've worked with Warner Chappelle Music before. So tell me a little bit about your singing experiences. Do you sing a particular genre? Do you have time to sing these days? Do you sing out locally? Do you sing out internationally? Tell me a little bit about that side of you. Well, I haven't been playing music a lot this year with, with Barkville TV. And, and since I started directing, I, I still write. Um, I sure. write for myself. I haven't been doing it. I mean, what I was doing is I was writing and performing music for years, and I was um, placing my songs in films and television. I have a song in the Doors movie, the Oliver Stone Doors movie, and right. you know some really awesome stuff. Um, I just, I just kind of like, I don't know, this directing thing and producing thing takes all my attention. I'm, I'm also learning to right. edit. I edited like six to eight music videos um, last year and the year before on my own. I shoot as well as direct. I like run, run the camera. I'm the cinematographer. Like I've learned so much that all of my focus is kind of on that right now, but I'm sure I'll get back to the music because that's in my, in my blood and my heart, you know? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So it's always I there. understand. Yeah. And there are some people, so I guess this is a fair question to ask you. Like when I interview actresses, sometimes they'll have a background like yours where they also sing and do other things. And for them, it's almost heartbreaking, and I can hear it in their voice when they're, they're so busy that they can't get back to that passion. So would you say your where does your area of passion lie strongest, meaning the acting, the writing component, the directing, or the singing? What, do you, what can you not live without? I think now I can't live without directing. But I have to say something I did leave out with the music. I am doing music sure. in Barfield TV. We, we do our own music. Right. We produce our own music for – so my editor, Stevie Pine, and he's also my cinematographer, he is a record producer and an incredible musician. So he's been doing a lot of music, and I'm doing it with him now. Like, we're, I sing, I play Tina Turner Dog in uh, Mad Mutt's Furry Road, and I sing, we don't need another poodle. <laughs> it's like my impersonation. <laughs> but I'm doing, I'm, doing, I'm doing all kinds of fun stuff. I'm taking all of my talents and putting them all into this project right now. So it's kind of cool. That is absolutely awesome. That's cool. Okay, now one of the other things that you do, obviously, of course, you're president of Original Pixel Cowboys. So yes. we want to talk about that, of course. Now, underneath that blanket of what you've put together here, what sorts of projects are underneath Original Pixel Cowboys that people would be interested to see? Well, we just start, We just started the company this past year it's my it's my production mm-hmm. company and um one right. of the projects that i'm going to be getting back to is a documentary film about the viper room johnny depp's club yeah um and okay. i i actually was the promoter at the club back in the 90s and i started my film career directing a, a documentary on that club and, and i was just talking about it with my distributor at lunch just now we're going to get back to filming it once we get barksville tv more established and more stuff shot. Okay. We're going to go back in and finish that film and get it out. Oh, there. exciting. And that's that's, that is film. exciting, actually. And since, mm-hmm. of course, you are on there and you used to be there, I'm sure that everyone is intrigued to hear a little something, something, because most of us had never been to the Viper Room before. So tell us, a little, give us a little inside glimpse into a place like that. Um, we all hear stories about it, some good, some not so good. So tell us a little something mm-hmm. that's unique or out of the ordinary about the Viper Room. Well, what's, what's the most unique thing, I think, is that the, the nightclub is 150-person capacity, and Johnny wow. Depp, of course, the movie star, owned, owned it. And the right. people that you would see in that club, it was like you have rock stars jump up on the stage, like not being announced, like Mick Jagger or Iggy Pop or just like anyone. I mean, David Bowie, like all these people would just – all of a sudden show up after their big gig in town and do a surprise performance oh there. And then people would be in the audience like Quentin Tarantino or, you know, movie oh stars. Goodness. And it was a mix of, and, and people just from the neighborhood. Like, so it was a mix of everybody. And that was, okay. was so unusual about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, no kidding. That must be so extraordinary, obviously, of course, you know. And then, of course, we always hear about, now, have you met the man himself? I always ask people that. I'm like, tell me the person that you met in this, what we call the celebrity limelight that you found most intriguing or out of the ordinary. It doesn't have to be somebody infamous. Just tell me someone that you've either worked with or met that just impressed you personally and professionally. Robin Williams. <laughs> Robin oh, Williams. you are a lucky woman. That's yeah. I got to, and tell me I got why. To I can imagine. 
He oh, was amazing. Oh, my gosh. He was so amazing. And I, I got to do a TV series, a short-lived TV series called Out of the Blue, and it was a spin-off or spin-on of Mork and Mindy. And I mm-hmm. was a little girl, and he was just brilliant, genius, like one of the most genius people I've ever met. He was funny all the time, and he, he was just wonderful, and he liked kids, and he liked me. And we took yoga together. Um, we had a yoga, oh, private neat. yoga teacher at Paramount, and he used to take it. He was just awesome. That's one person. Another one is Dave Jordan, record producer who produced Jane's Addiction, Alice in Chains, um, The Offspring. Yep. He's my business partner now. He's my partner in Barfield TV, and he's one of the most brilliant musician and record producers that I've ever met in my life. And he mentors me as well in my career. Oh, my God. And, I, and I'm That's so lucky, awesome. you know, so lucky. No kidding. Robin Williams, that is like, it may, oh, I cried when, and I didn't even meet him, but I cried when he died. I thought, oh, my God, that is a huge loss for the entertainment no, community, for no. well, the community in general. Oh, just absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, I have to tell you, and I have to be honest, that my children got excited when I was interviewing him. My kids always get excited when they can relate to anybody that's on my show. And it wasn't the dog mm-hmm. thing, believe it or not, because my boys are 10 and almost 12. And the one thing that they thought was so cool was like, Oh my God, she was in the Incredible Hulk. Because my one son is all about the Incredible Hulk. And he's like, Oh my God, Smash Mom. And I think it's so funny. And I'm like, Oh my God. So this is my son's question to you. He's like, Ask her if she's ever met the real Incredible Hulk before and what he was like. And I'm like, Okay, honey, I'll make sure I ask her. So this is the Incredible Hulk question from my son in school right now. Have you met the Incredible Hulk? And of course, this yes, is the older I Incredible, the Hulk, Incredible right? Hulk. I worked with the Incredible Hulk with Lou Ferrigno. Yes. And um, oh my, I, my whole scene in, in The Incredible Hulk was with him. Um, he okay. say, first, he scares me. And then, and then he <laughs> saves my life. I tip, I tip over in a canoe, and I'm drowning, and he saves my life. And he was amazing. Aww. He was this gentle giant, Lou Ferrigno. And, and the thing sure. that's really a trip is I met him all these years later. Like this year, this last year, I saw him at the Hollywood show. It's like this autograph signing show. And I went up to him, and he remembered me from when I was 11 years old. He remembered me. Oh, my God. That is neat. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I oh, like hearing that totally. sort of thing because people can get caught up and forget things and all that good stuff. Yeah, because my kids watch this, and they're, like, completely – not only awestruck, but they're like, they're so big, Mom. And I'm like, yeah, Lou Ferrigno was big. You know, that Baxter guy mm-hmm. was not that big. The new guy, not mm-hmm. that big. I mean, that, that was mm-hmm. a huge giant, definitely. Mm-hmm. No, but I, I want to flip gears to the movie side real quickly to talk about, obviously, the two that I picked out that I liked the most, Repo Man. And, of course, I didn't know that you had done work on Patty Hearst. Now, that's oh, yeah. kind of disturbing uh, material, definitely. So what intrigued yeah. you to work on a, on a project like that? On Patty Hearst? Well, Paul Schrader mm-hmm. is what intrigued me to work on that. And I, um, I wanted to work with Paul Schrader, who wrote Taxi Driver and Raging Bull. I, uh, mm-hmm. I did anything. I was, I was so in awe of him. And I actually was cast in two projects at the same time. Patty Hearst and a television series called The Wonder Years, and I turned down The Wonder Years to do Patty Hearst <gasps> because I really, really, yeah, because I really wanted to work with Paul Schrader. I was a huge movie buff, and I was always interested in directing, you know. And and it was an amazing experience, and the cast of that was so incredible. Um, Natasha Richardson, who's now passed, who played Patty Hearst. Um, I mean, Dana Delaney, I mean, it goes on and on, Bing Rames. I mean, everyone right. went on to these fabulous movie careers, you know, and uh, it was just a really great experience and playing a real person who lived and died and getting to research right. that person and, and be that person was such an awesome experience. And it's a real acting experience, you know. Oh, definitely. No, no, no. I totally understand. Now, we want to go through the rundown here, folks, because I have a few questions relative to this. Now, listen to this, and this isn't her whole repertoire. These are just the ones I picked up because I'm not going to lie. I like every one of them more. Uh, we have Soap. We have Charlie's Angels, One Day at a Time, 21 Jump Street, Fame, Saint Elsewhere, Little House on the Prairie, of course, and Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Oh, my gosh. I was like, <laughs> wonder I love this woman so much. I am like a throwback from the 80s like every other day. I mean, everything relative to the 80s I love. I watched One Day at a Time. I watched 21 Jump Street. How funny is that? Little House on the Prairie. Mm-hmm. So I guess I'm going to ask you something because you're so rich in having worked in that generation of television. And so for yourself now as an older actress and looking at, at how things are on television now, the, the television in general, Talk to me a little bit about mm-hmm. how you think the TV has evolved. And that could be good or that could be not so good, to tell you the truth. The level of programming and such versus like the things you've worked on now versus today. How do you think we've kind of emulated or come forward 
and the TV industry, if you will. Uh, I think it's. I think television is an, ama- in, an amazing place today. I mean, I I aspire to directing television now. That's what I want to do. That's where I want to go from Barfield TV is to digital TV or, or or HBO or you know. It's like there's so sure. many great narrative series now, and and it's like the narrative series are like the movies were in the 90s. Do you know what I mean? It's like that's. Oh, do. I totally do. As, you know, as a filmmaker we get to do a longer piece. We get to like, it's like doing, you know, it's like doing eight little, eight movies. Like you do a series on Netflix and you get to do eight films, feature films. That's right. awesome for a director, you know? Oh, definitely. I bet it is. As a matter of fact, I was going to suggest this idea to you because I'm so glad you just said that. Because I was thinking before I interviewed you, I'm like, I wonder if she thought of the idea of having her own television series where you literally would become what I do, which is you'd be interviewing and hosting the stars of some of the shows that you used to be on and such. I think people would get such a big kick out of that. Wow. I don't know. Just neat. a thought. Throwing that's it out neat. there. This, I, just, I don't know if it would work or not, but I'm like, that would totally be a great idea because somebody like me would totally watch that. Anybody who was a fan of any of these shows would be like, of course you want to see people like that. That would be awesome. Um, oh, cool. I don't want to talk. I don't want to forget this. You have done two other things. First of all, you wrote the fishbone reality, which as I understand it is in post-production now. Is that correct? No, actually, that we finished that, and we shot that. You at did, YouTube. okay. Yes, we finished that. Okay. Shot that at YouTube Space. Um, we did not go on with that as a series yet. There's still talk about it, but again, I'm into Barfield TV okay. now. But we shot the pilot, and sure. um, okay. it's it can be it can be seen on Vivo, um, and I think YouTube. But that was a, okay, that was a it. really wacky, wild piece, and that's how Barfield TV <laughs> was born. That was where it came really? from because the, because Elvis of Venice, the standard poodle, has a cameo role in the Fishbone reality, and everyone loved his role so much. I made him a talking dog uh, that I decided to create a series around Elvis, and that became Barfield TV. Oh, that is absolutely awesome because I was curious about that because I wanted to check it out, and I was like, well, where do I go and find this? And then I saw the post-production thing, so I thought, well, maybe it's not ready yet, but we can look yeah, at the IMDb. pilot part of that. Yeah, I am. Okay, I, think I got says you. That I, I may have to update it because I'm the it production does. company. I always forget. <laughs> you are, no, no, no. I understand definitely. Now the other side, mm-hmm. of, uh, the other thing that I found out about you was you had done work with both Fallout Entertainment and Cinemine Films, which we all recognized before. So your experience with Fallout Entertainment, um, what was that like? Because they're they're pretty well known out there and such, and that can be a pretty imitating process. The higher up on the chain you go, obviously. So what types of things did you do with them, and, and did you enjoy your time there, and are you still currently working or collaborating with them? Well, Tara Entertainment is Bill Fishman's company, and Bill Fishman is the man who gave me my start as a director. Um, yes, oh, I'm still – I yeah, they, they started me out with a Viper movie, and he's the executive producer on it, and um, – you know, he kind of threw me in the fire. I was I was producing and raising finance with Cinemine, which was a company of mine. I was raising finance for other feature films, other people's films, and and it was like it just wasn't for my heart. I'm more of a creative, and I was okay. doing it. And Billy pulled me out of that and said, "You need to be your creative. You need to be directing. Here, you're going to be directing this movie next week. We're starting, and it's going to be a Fallout production. And that's how the Viperin started." And then I did music videos over there. Um, I did a bunch of music videos. They're primarily a music video company and feature film company. And, yes, they gave me my start, and I went from there and formed original Pixel Cowboys, and I still collaborate with Fallout whenever I can, you know. And that's, oh, definitely. Yeah, it was that's, great. That's kind great of what experience. I thought. Well, you're so mm-hmm. busy all the time, and now that you've got the Parkville TV thing, it's like, oh, my gosh. Now, the last thing I want to ask you about is obvious, because to those of you that haven't checked her out, because I'm a stalker, journalists are basically stalkers, so we investigate our, our subjects quite well. And I've looked at a picture of you, and more than a few pictures, to say, you have some seriously kick-butt tattoos. You have tattoos, <laughs> which I thought was exciting to me. I'm like, she's tatted. This is awesome. <laughs> one so tattoo, tell me, I want to know how many tattoos you have, and are they significant? Because sometimes people just get tatted and get tatted, and I was just wondering. I was curious to see if there was meaning behind the tattoos that I saw. I just have one. I just have one on my oh. arm, and it's a, it's a clock with wings, and it signifies time flying, and it's, the time on the clock is the time I was born. It's 7.07. And that that was it. That's it. 
Oh, that's so neat. No, I just saw a picture of you, and I thought to myself, you know what's really neat about her? She has some very cool tattoos, but she also has some very cool hats. You're a woman that wears a hat very well, but I'm gathering you know I'm that wearing, already. I'm wearing a hat right now, actually. I'm wearing my cowboy uh, hat. Oh, look at yeah. that. Shocker. <laughs> look at this. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so there are two things that we have to finish up yet before I let you go, because I know that you have to fly back to your home, um, you know, to California, right? Cause you, now, do you live in the yes. city in California? In LA itself? I live in, I live in Santa Monica, yeah. Okay, Santa Monica, got it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I understand. In case those of us, are, mm-hmm. or those of you who are male and looking to go and ask her out, that's where you would find her, if she's ever there, because <laughs> she's so busy. Now, I'm going to do this rundown, so let me, I'll finish all of these, and then you let me know if I forgot everything. And to the listening audience, I'm just going to rattle off all these things, and this is for their benefit, of course, so that everybody listening knows how to find you. Um, her name is Olivia, her last name is spelled, and it's B-A-R-A-S-H. Now, the way to find her, as in her herself, she has both a a Facebook personal page, and she also has a fan page, which is called, of course, Olivia, again, B-A-R-A-S-H, fans. She is on LinkedIn, she is on IMDb, and she also can be found on YouTube. Her Bartville TV can be found. Um, She has a Facebook page for that. She has an Instagram, and it's called Bartville TV, but it's spelled B-A-R-K-V-I-L-L-E. She is on YouTube with Barkville TV. The Twitter handle is at Barkville TV. And, of course, the website is Barkville TV. Now, have I missed anything? No, I think that's all. We have an Instagram. That's all. We have an Instagram. Oh, yes, we that's right. Barkville in- TV. It's Barkville TV yeah. is on Instagram as well. Gotcha. Okay, now, yeah. before I forget, if there's anybody out there listening, because many of my friends, of course, are in film and production as well, if anybody wants to make a submission for Barkville TV, what do they need to do? Is there a process, or how does that work? Well, we have um, our our website, but there's a, a an email address which is bark at barkvilletv.com. Bark okay. at barkville TV. I think that's it. I just want to make sure I got it right. Bark at barkville TV. Please. No, it's bark at barkville TV at. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm confused now. I think it's bark at barkville TV.com or bark barkville TV at gmail.com is the other one. Barfield TV okay. at gmail.com, but it says it on our sites. Like if you go to our, our sites, you're going to see it on Facebook and on YouTube. Got it. It tells you how to do okay, it. Okay, yeah. Right, because I don't want to give them this I, information, of course. Yeah, but it's, I know there's a Barfield, Barfield TV.com, but there's also a Barfield TV at gmail.com. That's probably an easier one. Got to it. Do it okay, so that's way then people can address. submit. Oh, I gotcha. love it. Gotcha. Wonderful. We want, we want people to submit their home videos of their dogs. Funny dog videos is what we're after. Quirky. Gotcha. Oh, I like that. Okay. Now, before mm-hmm. I forget, the last thing that I do on my show is I get to tell the people on the show what I think of them. So you are a guest mm-hmm. on my show, so now I get to give you my impressions. And the reason that I do that is because most of the time I have a large listening audience. This is the very first time that I've ever heard of Olivia before. And so I get a chance to show what I think of you personally, professionally, and otherwise. And that will leave them with a nice lasting impression. And it will tell you what I think of you. Because I've been thinking all mm-hmm. week long of what I should say to you. <laughs> Believe wow. it or not, actually. All right. So wow. right before I start, I do not want to forget about this. Dana Humphrey. My dear Dana Humphrey is the reason why yes. Olivia and myself connected. Um, she is one of my oldest publicist friends. She is one of my dearest friends in New York City. So to mm. you, Dana Humphrey, I say this much to you. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I have some of the best people that visit my show, courtesy of you, Dana. And the reason why is because they have such a passion for their pets, and they have such a passion for what they do. So my dear Dana, I miss you terribly, and I'm coming to New York City a lot in the next two months, and I expect to see you. So I know she'll listen to <laughs> So, Dana, I love you, and I miss you very, very much. And thank you so much for Olivia because she's, she's a doll. Okay, so now my impressions okay. of Olivia uh, go as such. Believe it or not, uh, when she told me that you were coming on the show, I, I thought to myself, this has got to be a pet-loving person with a pet-loving product, which you do have. But I was so surprised to find out so much more about you. When I looked at you, my first impression was to say that you reminded me of a very um, – Lee. And I can't remember her last name. Help me out. She is a Hollywood star. Her first name is Lee. She has dark, short hair. Do you know who I'm referring to? Oh, and I, no. And, it, and it, I'm just going for a blank right now. But you know who it is, don't you? There's a, there's a Hollywood actress by the name of Lee something. And now I'm going to be embarrassed because I can't remember her last name. She has short, oh. dark hair and a bob. And she's lovely. She's beautiful. She has this very striking presence to her. See, that was the first oh. thing I thought of. I thought of kind of vintage 
glamour, older Hollywood actress. That's the first thing I thought oh, of when I looked cool. at your picture. I thought to myself, she could be sitting on a street corner filming something while she's writing as she's singing a little ditty in her head. These are the first three things that came to mind when I looked at your picture. Then when I researched you, I came to find out you were on the set walking and talking and performing in front of some of the elite in town, which makes you elite because of the fact that you were surrounded by that, but more importantly because you came – such a, you became such a success at such a young age. You built mm-hmm. and worked and produced and directed some of the coolest things. And you you are what I call my creative chameleon. I love having creative chameleons <laughs> on my show. They don't do one thing. They do 20 things. And they do them all very, very well. I like this Thank concept, you. as I told my listening audience before you came on. The Bartsville TV concept is really cool because of the fact that it integrates man's best friend along with one of man's best conquests, is to be able to save and rescue and tend to our animals as best as we can. We have to work on our planet, we have to work on our animals, and we have to work on ourselves. You're trying to attempt to bring entertainment while using this, while bringing to light something so important, which is adoption and rescue. And for that, you could be and should be commended. I am very, very lucky that I had a chance to talk to you. I'm going to beg you until you physically agree to meet me in New York City somewhere, because I just want to meet you to be in your presence. I think you're amazingly impressive. And last of all, I, in shock, I have to admit, folks, what I was expecting to come on my show was a very deep deep sounding actress and who frankly would scare me, but you're very quiet. You're very timid sounding. Oh my gosh. So thank you for not being so scary. I mean, I appreciate it because I was petrified. I'm like, I don't know what to think, but you are, you're just, you're absolutely lovely. And I'm going to, um, just so you know, this episode is archived two hours afterwards. And so eventually when I make my way back to Facebook and I'm not so miserable because I'm kind of avoiding the world and staying off of social media, I'll go back on to my pages. I'm going to not only post this interview up, but I have a numerous amount of friends that do production and make short films all the time. I'm sure I can find contributors like immediately for your um, oh, channel. Awesome. I know it without a fact. Thank you Definitely. so much. So I'll make sure that... Yes, I'll make sure that I post that up. I'll post up the information about here. If there's anything I can do to promote the TV show beyond this, I certainly will. And I'm going to, believe it or not, yes, I like this idea. I'm going to pitch a producer friend of mine and see if I uh, could spark some interest on the Netflix side of things to do a show with you. Because I think you would be terrific doing a show. Just for people to be out and about, I think it would be amazing. And please do stay in touch the next time you come back to New York City. Because I would love to see you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd love to meet you. (laughs) <laughs> Wonderful. That would Take be great. Care. All Thank right, Miss Olivia, so you go indeed. get your flight. I'm going to finish up. All I'll right. talk to you soon. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, tell me that she wasn't amazing, right? I know I'm a ridiculous geek that gets excited, but I can't help myself. It's just because everybody that comes on my show is a celebrity, and I'm blessed enough to be able to work with them. So, yeah. Again, one more time, thank you so much to Dana Humphrey, to anybody looking for PR services. Whitegate PR is the place to be. I want to go off and reiterate the entire bunch of stuff again one more time. Barkville TV, and again, that is, and Ville is V-I-L-L-E TV. The website is BarkvilleTV.com. The Facebook and Instagram are both the same, which is Barkville TV. Her work itself, meaning the channel, can be found on YouTube. Her Twitter handle is at, and it's Barkville, B-A-R-K-V-I-L-L-E-T-D. And, of course, her name, in case you aren't familiar with her, it's Olivia Barish, and that's spelled B-A-R-A-S-H. She has a personal Facebook page as well as Olivia Barish, B-A-R-A-S-H, fans, and that's for the fan page. She is on LinkedIn. IMDb, and YouTube as well. And, of course, don't forget to tune in to check that out, along with all the various other things which she mentioned, which is, of course, Fishbone Reality, which is on YouTube. As she mentioned, she shot the pilot. She's done work with Warner Chappelle Music. And, of course, her production company is Original Pixel Cowboys. And please do visit the website, as she had mentioned. If you want to go ahead and submit or you have anything relative to Parkville TV, go to their website directly for submissions. Do check my show page in terms of tomorrow's guest. And forgive me, like I said, I'm on the fly, so I'm not at home. I'm not able to tell you who I'm having on, but I'm sure it's someone spectacular. Thank you so much to all of my fans and to my followers for listening in today. And on the last note, I know that some of you have been um, contacting me by email and texting, et cetera, as to my absence on Facebook and otherwise. Um, I just need a little downtime after this last trip, do some processing and um, make a determination on some of my future plans relative to film and the film festivals. So I appreciate your cooperation and your respecting my, um, just my choice to stay off of social media and kind of just stay away from things for a little while until things get worked out. I appreciate your support. Thanks again to everybody listening and uh, tune in tomorrow for tomorrow's show. Thanks.
What you doing? I'm running out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. What you doing? I'm running out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions.